Out of swing by Adamus, and I feel like it's a celebration of the return of the legendary Jeremy. I haven't seen you in a few years, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks for having me. It's great to be back. I thanks for Vegas. having me. You hear this guy? Of course I'm gonna have you. Jeremy's <laughs> like, are you kidding me? I'm get, get me Jeremy. First of all, you're doing way different stuff than ever before. Yeah. We're talking about Adamus walking out another step towards something than, than, than just external records. We're talking about the Sun Dragon, which yep. is a new light, yep. and the Ninja phone, phone yeah. which you think is its phone, but it's let, not. let's do the phone first, and then we're gonna talk about what, yeah, hold on. Yeah. Let's talk about the okay. phone. This is the Ninja phone, yeah, and you need a case. You click it on the back of the unit, yeah, and now you come in HDMI like a Ninja. We encode ProRes, we work with Apple to do this. Yep. ProRes out the USB-C into the into the phone. Your phone. Into your that's phone. iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max, because that's the first 10-bit OLED panel. Yeah. And then you get this. Yeah, we're seeing a lot happening around here from the iPhone 15 itself because of the USB-C thing. And Correct. you guys just went right in, yeah. <laughs> like fast. Which, which turns it into the world's best monitor recorder. Yeah, okay. so, so if you already have the screen, you're not having to pay for a screen, basically. So we've got Ninja app, which comes for free. Yep with the unit, and then you've got all the Ninja functions lined up down here. You can do scopes, and you're seeing that wonderful OLED monitor. So you come out of the camera, PQ or HLG is the best. Yeah. Then the ProRes comes into the phone. The phone's A17, you know, ridiculous oh, billions of dollars of <laughs> development from the richest company in the world. Goes decode instantly, so this is all yeah. Instant. Yeah, There's no, no, latency no latency because of ProRes. And it all comes back to ProRes. But you're also getting a full image. Like there's no like cluttering no. it up with a graphic no. interface. No, no. So this is clean out like we've always pushed from the camera maker. So all those camera maker relationships coming back into the fore. Yep. We've got them excited again because of this, plus the raw recording and stuff we already do. Yeah, but you got so many options. I mean, this is a GFX. Yeah. I mean, Nikon, they're all just really going hard. X100 Mark VI from Fuji. Yep. World's biggest back ordered camera. Yeah, yeah. I have perfect, one. Perfect, <laughs> perfect, perfect for this. Perfect yep. for this. And then you got whatever you log into is available for the 5G and Wi-Fi 6E from the phone. That's cool. Right? So you. It's HD all the way because the phone's HD, the internet you want to go to supports really only HD right now, but it's all HDR. So it goes to the phone, ProRes, decodes to the screen so you can monitor it. We, we can see that. Yeah. You store the ProRes if you want. Right. That's hit and record. Yeah. You can choose to store the phone instantly. It re-encodes to H.265 10-bit. Yeah? What? Stores that and streams it same time. Okay, I got a question. How about heat management? Mate, it's so, no, you don't need it. Ours is whisper quiet. There's no fan in it. It's an ASIC from us, which is all ProRes. See, I know you guys saw Ninja Phone and you were like, I don't know. This makes way more sense the more you put the pieces together, right? Yeah, that's right. And at the same time, this wireless mic, yeah. you got a USB-C on the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Receiver here, right. lock video to audio in the Ninja mm -hmm. and straight into the phone. And then everything's synced on the way out. Wild. Yeah, it also integrates into all of our Ninja and Shogun, so all the Ninja and Shogun customers can buy this as an extra, integrates perfectly into the light. So this this live production, up to eight cameras, including this. That's pretty sick. Is it available now? It's available June. June, Shipping okay. June. We so just did our first production, and I've just got to make sure everything's kind of quality checked, and then we're going to hit go on the mass. Yeah, you guys are pretty good with that, so check the links down below for that. But before we get out of here, and while I got the man, because yeah. I'm a lighting oh, guy. Thing, thing, okay, okay, thing, oh, it's thing. always another thing. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> So, locking cables. Oh, snap. Oh. Yo, that's dope, all right. That's why you need the case. Very cool. Right, not only to click it on with other accessories, but you click that in, locking, click that in. And it's braided. Locking. Nice. Yeah, because I, I love cables when they're nice. Yeah. And, there's all, and almost all of them are not nice. <laughs> well, also, the, one of the worst things ever is blowing a port because you rip a cable, then you're, a, a port is connected to a board, which is the whole unit, and then everything's garbage. Yeah, send it all back. Yeah. yeah. So this is all very, very robust with the locking connectors. Whoa. Pretty ill. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Next. I'm a lighting guy. Yes. You yes, know. Yes. Let me walk you through it. The Sun Dragon. I'm gonna. I, let me give you some feedback. We saw the sign it's for, and we're like, oh, it's just a circular light. Just show the end coming off a little bit to show it's. <laughs> it's a. It's basically a pro rope light. Can be submerged. Submerged over there. I heard it's 30 degree bend. Yep, that's right. But no, 30 centimeter radius. So, oh, okay. so you can do 
I was about to say, that's more than a 30 degree bend right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So five meters, and they can be daisy chained. 16 feet, man, we're in America. <laughs> You're gonna yell at me with that accent that we're in America? Are you kidding me right now? I love it. <laughs> so you can bend it, you know, you can bend it a lot, right? Just don't snap it. Yeah, I get it. It's a bendable PCB. It's a whole new design where the LEDs are on the top side because if they're on the side and it's bending, the light's emitting in the wrong direction. It's also burning a lot of light, transcending through the plastic rather than emitting and giving you an actual expulsion of light, which is very smart. And we've, we've invented a new liquid. It's like a glue, but it's not a glue. No, seriously, we have. Yeah? That's, that doesn't change any color profile of the, of the LED. Oh, I see. Which is what makes it waterproof. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. But you were telling me there's something special about these LEDs. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've been developing for the LCDs of our monitors for years. And we, we bin and make sure that they're perfect color representation. So that's what we've put in here. What we've done is take those LEDs, put them in here, perfect color representation. We've put a chip inside the driver unit at the end here, yeah. this end, yeah. right? Which is Which one, of our ninja, one, one of our ninja chips. Oh, okay. Right? Which means makes that sense. all the algorithms work, yeah, for DMX. Yeah. You can do all the effects. Okay, but then if we're talking about that, what are the lumens like? 2,000 lumen at any point along the whole rope. So it's consistent? Consistent end to end. Because that's the problem with rope strip lights in the past. You put one in, it's one at one end, it's dodgy at the other end because the voltage drops. Because of our electronic capability, we can, we've worked out how to keep that. That's the three layer PCB. Yeah, and the other thing is that, you know, you see tube lights everywhere, right? And tubes are great because you can hide them in scenes. Where do you think you could put this? I Anywhere. mean, they, they literally have it roping through. I gotta say, I was like, I don't know. And the more you look at it, the more you, you, you see where it's coming from. Plus you can coil it together and make it its own one single unit, which is right there. So you're all in with the kit, right? You get Correct, that. you get that with it. You get yeah, that, yeah. we get the controller. You also get RF control, not only wireless DMX, right? You get our RF, which is the wireless sync. Yeah. It also is your DMX control. So we'll be selling receivers for all your current lights to control from ninjas. Because there's two types of lighting, okay, right? Cool. There's cinema gaffer lighting, which is off its head crazy <laughs> difficult, right? Yeah. Nin that we support all the current things that they're using, yeah? Then there's the production lighting, which is all of our event videographers. Thank you out there for being ninja customers. They just want to control it up and down, throw it on the floor. And the reason we did it is, you know we love HDR, right? I'm pushing HDR all the time because I just love the image. Yeah. It's the way our phones can receive, our TVs can receive it, so why aren't we shooting it? Well, nighttime, yes, we can use HDR. Daytime, yes, we can use HDR. But as soon as clouds come over or you're in a studio, panel light, flood the scene, yeah. no dynamic range, no shadows, no nothing, yeah? Well, yeah, you're key lighting it out, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. And so there's no, there's no HDR capability in the scene yeah. because you're, physically taking it out. So these, stick them around a post, put them on the floor. You can even put them in the scene because they're so color accurate. So the, you know the TV, TLCI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Television Linear Color yeah, Index. The other CRI. Yeah, the it's CRI. the other. <laughs> but what it does is it tells you whether you need to color correct for that light or not. Yeah, so 100 means you don't, we're 98 on that spectrum. That's cool. I think it's also, what I think is gonna actually happen is it's, I think people are gonna wrap them around rigs themselves. So, like in video games, right? You play Elden Ring, your character's glowing as you go through a dark world. Yeah, yeah. I think you are going to become the light source, almost like mounting a ring light, but now it's more 360. So you gotta to come to the raffle this afternoon because... You're gonna give me one of these. That's of course I will, of course I will. You deserve one. So, when I get up on the raffle, I'm gonna be having this around my neck, yeah? <laughs> and you know why? Because America loves bling, and I'm gonna tell you, there's no better bling than this around your neck yeah we could be so i should just plug this in now luma bros yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool and i think we're only gonna see more expansion and use cases for especially that you can daisy chain i think that's a big deal yeah that is a big deal how many can you put together um well you need to put if you go more than three you need to put power. another power yeah, to it course. but that's it and what about uh is there app control or anything yeah all the dmx app work we've got bluetooth we've got wi-fi and we got the RF from the ninjas. So there's more to it than you think, and I think that's always been the case with this, and this is the guy that always has to kind of put the pieces together for you. Jeremy, listen, we're gonna put links as much as we can down there. This is still before it's released. So yeah, it's, correct. There's only so it'll be, much. It'll be released in June. Okay. Um, we can show you a lot of control. 
Uh, and yeah, we really hope you like them. And if you want to check out anything with the phone, we'll put it down there. And like you were saying with the X106, check out our video that we did in Japan with the X106. We filmed the entire video on that camera, that little camera. We could have hooked up to this and we could have gone live from it. Correct. Which is that I didn't know. Very cool. Legacy companies at NAB like light panels. We've been using light panels a lot of times on this channel. I use the Gemini's every now and then, but Astra's are like the light that I think everyone at some point has used, rented, owned, or some other way. But now, Michael's telling me we got a new series to the Astra's. That's right, yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're actually almost to the day, 10 years since the first Astra launch. It was Cine Gear 2014 or something like that, then, then or thereabouts. And like you say, people all over have been using Astra's for bits and pieces, but it needed modernizing, it needed updating, and crucially, it needed waterproofing. That was the main thing we've been asked for for, for quite some time. So we've got a range of waterproof lights here, IP65 lights, and we've introduced a smaller half size uh, and a larger two by one size, as well as the existing one by one size. So you're looking at a bit of a scale down, but waterproof, right? Lighter weight. So you're talking about accessible price point, good for running gun, ENG live, right? Location type stuff, right? Yeah. That's kind of where we're looking Absolutely, at? Absolutely, yeah. Particularly with the, the half and the one by, if like portability and like moving quickly and traveling with lightweight gear is important to you, something like this that weighs uh, less than three kilos, but still gonna give you a nice punch, 1500 lux at 10 feet. Uh, again, if, you, if portability is the key, you want kits to move around with really, really easily, you're concerned about weights of things, Exactly, uh, exactly who it's been designed for. And you get the consistency and dependability of light panels. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the color quality, the dimming quality, the build quality, all this stuff that you associate with the light panels range, all been transferred. It all been improved, to be honest. Three-year warranty is standard now as a reflection of our commitment to the build quality. No registration required, just straight out the box, three-year warranty. Yeah. And they've been designed as like a rough and tough fixture. Yeah. We, we get that from day one, these are going to have a horrible life. They're going to be dropped, <laughs> kicked, Fall off stands, all kinds of EMG, stuff. Going, yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. We gotta go. Yeah, yeah. Rah! yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So they've been designed with that in mind. Even things like, you know, these rubber over molds along here. If you drop it, it, it can take it, you know. It's, and it's glove friendly, right? Big yeah. knobs, right? Yeah, like yeah. stuff like that. So they, it's, they, they think about who's gonna use it and they've been in the industry forever, yeah, so yeah, you know what's yeah. up. If there's a part of the industry we know is, is this, like, like through and through, and it's specifically designed for those field crews, for ENG crews, for camera operators who want good quality, punchy white light, but don't need anything else, don't want anything else. But it, you're, and also accessible price points, it, right? Yeah, exactly right, yeah, 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 uh, yeah 8, 825 list. 2200 list and 1050 list. Yeah, so if you guys are looking for a good running gun kit that can handle a beating, he, just, he literally just said they expected a rough childhood for these kids. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead and check out the links down below. Michael, thanks so much. Thank man. you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. So we're swinging by the Fuji film booth for Fujinon. A lot of people don't realize this, that Fujinon is the optics division within Fuji film. All your Fuji lenses say Fujinon, trust me. So I got Stash here because you actually added a new lens to a really cool lineup. What's going on with Duvo? What am I looking at here? So what we have here is the second portable lens in the Duvo line. This is the 14 to 100. So what we're doing is bringing that wide angle of view to PL mount cameras. It sure looks like a video lens, like a broadcast two thirds inch lens but that's a, at the cinema PL mount at the back end of that. That's going to give you that same focus roll off, that same color uh, as your Cabrio lenses. So the Cabrio lenses have been around for 10, 11 years now. They're doing great. Duvo now brings that look more to the live environment. We have the Cabrios, they're really focused on cinema. <laughs> they're big. Cinema, they can be big, yeah, 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 they can be big. These ones are, are small, lightweight, ideal for steady cam, handheld. Vocation, fast work, stuff yeah, like that. that. Live, live, think live. sports, think house of worship, think concerts, anything that's live. But they're, these are, but these they're are very ideal. versatile because the Duvo means dual, right? So you were talking about the expander in this. Can, let's, let's talk about that. For sure, for sure. So these, le these lenses all have uh, 1.5 times expanders. If, if you swing around, you'll see it over here in the housing. So that expander, what that'll do is that is going to uh, allow you to blow up the image circle to fill a full frame camera. So here we have it on the Sony Burano. If we flip that into full frame mode, engage the expander, it will fill that whole sensor. If you leave it in super 35 mode, that's gonna act as an extender now. So instead of being a 14 to 100, now you're a 21 to 150. Yeah, so if you have a camera that's doing a lot of different things with different crop modes, it's awesome. 
It's awesome. You're covered. Yeah. You're covered. Flip it in and away you go. So the 14100 is new, but this is a whole lineup. So what are the other ones in the Duvo line? So the, uh, there's another portable lens. It's a 24 to 300. We see that over here. Again, small, lightweight, portable. This is set up very much NFL film style on an Alexa 35 with the uh, master grips. You can throw it on your shoulder, go run and gun. We see this a lot in sports, a lot in documentary, all that kind of stuff. So again, the 1.5 times exp uh, expander, the same grip, 24 to 300. It's a very cool, and then the third one's a monster, right? The, third, one, the third one's <laughs> up top, it's a box lens. Yeah, So, so that, that, that again is something completely new, a whole new paintbrush to, to directors and productions to have a 25 to 1,000 mil. Belt driven. 25 to 1,000 mil belt driven box lens. Native PL mount, we're not using adapters or any of that kind of stuff. You're not losing light, you're not losing optical performance. Native PL, so if you're doing that concert, you can get the lenses back a house and get the headshot of your, uh, of your performer That's and awesome. not be killing all the, the front row seats. And you were talking about the focus breathing on that? On the, on the, um, on the Cine box lens yeah. being belt driven, there's a real cool feature that, uh, that is focus breathing. So as you rack focus, it's actually going to move the zoom group. We know how much it, it, it breathes. We yeah. designed the lens. It'll move the zoom group to compensate. So your angle of view, your framing doesn't change as you rack focus. It's, it's awesome. amazing. Yeah, Fujino has been doing some really legacy glass for a long time. And I think you guys should look into it if you haven't thought about it before. And this is a really cool way of thinking about things. You always put out good things. I, I love, we, we are big fans of Fujifilm, but I feel like we don't touch enough on this channel on the Fujinon itself, the optics. So Stash, thank you so much, man. Thanks for coming Appreciate by, guys. It. Enjoy the rest of the show. Swinging through the core booth with Joe over here. And I know what you're thinking, like batteries. What more could you do with batteries? Core always finds more you can do with batteries. And they're throwing magnets at this time. Check this out. The snap is really interesting. Boom. Stackable. Yep. We have a new 49 watt hour battery. It's a 14 volt battery. It's called the Edge Snap. And as you can see, you just snap them together. So you can turn a 49 watt hour battery into a 98 watt hour battery into 147 watt hour battery. The more batteries you add, the more power you have, obviously, and then the more outputs. And you can stack charge them? You can stack charge them. You can stack up to eight and just have one USB-C charger going into one of them, and it'll charge all eight of them simultaneously. Yeah, and it, it, not only that, but the, there's the plate, too. Yeah, we have a QR plate that has several quarter 20 and 3 16 holes. It has a quarter 20 screw, so you can screw that into, like, a bottom of a, a, an FX3 or FX30. Um, and then, you know, it's a line, so we, have, we tell you where to put the camera lens so that you can... Um, have the power lined up, and then that's all you need for your power. And of course, you gotta hide the quarter in there. Oh yeah. Right, for the quarter 20, case you magnetized get... right there. Pretty slick, I, I like the little, it's the little things I really care yeah. about. in case you lose your screwdriver. You yeah, know, you I love, always you love lose a screwdriver. And that's not the only thing, you've also got the G3 batteries with the PD delivery. Yes, we have our uh, third generation Hypercore packs with our wraparound LEDs, our new Nextcore casing, has our PD Pro outputs as well as a one P-tap coming in uh, 99 and 144 watt hours V and G mount. But with the PD Pro port, I forgot, just real quick, huge voltage range output, five to 48 volt output. So on this particular battery, it's five to 28. We make PD Pro cables that will, uh, that are no polarity issues, oh, no okay. worries about SDIs. It's, it's USB-C compatible. So now your, bat, your cable's not gonna pop out. You know, it's, it's not just a USB-C cable sticking out. And it's really well thought out. Yeah. And that's, that's gonna be on our, it's on the G3s as well. But then, we just saw Black Magic about the Pixis, which takes the BP batteries. Yep. And you guys are already on it. We already have these, our, U, our Nano U98X batteries, uh, that has a PTAP built into it and USB-C already. So if you need to power accessories on it, and you can charge through the PTAP or the USB-C. Very cool, or, 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 you know, your regular Sony charger. Very cool, if you guys wanna see anything about that Pixis Black Magic camera, that's on our day one video. Go check that out. Joe, sick. So you gotta swing by Lumix, especially when the S5 II and the S52X have a massive firmware update, which is free. Matt Frazier has been our go-to guy for everything. We already did a video of what exactly the firmware breakdown is and what you get with it, which is unbelievable video proxy recording, all sorts of stuff. Absolutely. But what I wanna know is where did this come from? What, what, what are you guys thinking over at Lumix as far as the progression of the S series? Yeah, so I think, um, I, I think the first piece is that 
Lumix users are frankly used to firmware updates from Panasonic yep. and not things that are like patching problems. Uh, we're always looking for ways to enhance and improve our, our cameras. We think ultimately, if we are good to our customers and we provide them with updates that are useful, yes. um, they're going to spread the word about what we're doing. And then we'll support, man. Yeah, and we'll ultimately grow business that way because people get jealous. They hear, oh, my Lumix just added Frame.io camera to cloud support, and it added proxy files, and then they did this awesome stabilization system. Subject and then, detection and all sorts. I mean, it yeah. kept on going. When, when I got the list, I'm like, I was like, I got to crash course all this. It kept on going, and I was so like psyched for the brand because I feel like Lumix has been this like not talked about as much in the mainstream of things, but there's it's the build quality is awesome. Yeah. The image quality is awesome. The color science, people really love the system. Mm -hmm. And then you guys put out this like giant flag of, hey, we also do major support. Yeah, and I, and I think the thing with this firmware that caught us, that caught me by surprise personally, was how many photographers appreciated what yes. we did because we added the, um, the pre-burst function. And that one caught me by surprise because you know, it's a cool feature and I love that you can go back in time for the missed shot. <laughs> yeah. But it, I think it shows people that we're a hybrid brand. I think that's really what our philosophy right. is. We're not trying to make a separate line of cameras that are really good at video and they're just, their sensors are not high enough resolution for photography and then give you a separate camera that's like your photo camera. Yeah. We're ultimately trying to provide a solution that can live in both worlds and be effective for both customers. Well, you've been so good to video users. I mean, shutter angle, the GH series has been like phenomenal for a lot of people out there that right. are like all, I mean, the video nerds love <laughs> Lumix, right? But the stills guys, yeah, it was kind of like not messaged that way. And pre-burst, you guys didn't go halfway. You did raw pre-burst, which right. isn't on every brand. I mean, that's unbelievable. So it was really cool to see that at 30 frames per second. It wasn't like a caveat. You know, so I think, yeah, you're putting the messaging out there, but where are we going forward? Are we going to see more bodies out there? Are we going to see more firmware? Like, what do you think the S series is? Where do you think it's going, the full frame series? Well, our next firmware is going to give you 4,000 frames per second in 8K. <laughs> it's you going to read your thoughts. Do you believe me? No, it's I'm sorry. Um, I mean, ultimately, I think the, the direction you're seeing our company go is with a lot of partnerships. Right. So, you know, we have the Leica partnership. We have the Olympus partnership you know, in terms of camera mounts, right? But then we've also partnered with companies like Condor Blue, and we're yeah, doing like yeah. the, the handles and mounts and things like that. Now we're partnered with Frame.io to help with workflow efficiency. I think the thing that people will probably see from us is some real clever partnership solutions out there that will really shock people. Um, I think that's probably the next direction that we'll see the S-Series go. Oh, and, I, and ultimately G-Series as well. All right. Write a comment down below what partnerships you think that he's hinting at, because I'm super curious myself. I guess we're going to have to keep an eye on Lumix pretty closely. Just to be huh? clear, I'm not hinting at him. Samora, our director, is the one who was out there saying that partnerships are a big part of our future. So I'm just repeating what he has said. So um, I'm, a, I'm just as interested as you are as to find out what he means. I mean, you've been packing a lot in per dollar for the S5. And the S5 II, S5 II X, something like that. So I'm very curious to see what else is going to happen to us. I didn't see this firmware coming. I already thought it was a pretty great camera, especially since it's the first base detect autofocus in the system, yeah. which was a big change for you guys. Absolutely. You know, can I just ask you, where do you think, like, what took so long to get to that point? It's, it's difficult to say. I mean, when you when you make a direction that you're going in, yeah. um, you sort of have to look back at history, right? So when the GH4 came out, there was really no phase autofocus systems at that time in, in mirrorless cameras, okay. right? And so we thought we had a competitive advantage with the DFD technology. And so we invested in DFD in the next generation engine. Contrast based. Yeah, contrast yeah. based. And so when we made that investment, you try to make that investment work as much as you can. Yeah. So ultimately we realized that in order for us to achieve what we had to achieve, we were going to have to move into phase, and that's effectively what happened. Yeah, I think your user base is like so welcoming of it, and I think it's been getting into more hands, and now with the partnerships, I think it's only going to go from there. And I think the lens mount is really what's going to grow it when you have the L mount, which is like so many options out there, Leica glass, Sigma glass, Lumix glass, and I mean, you're seeing- And camera partners too. Yes, I yes. mean, DJ, DJI is an L mount alliance member, Black, Black Magic, Magic. Is an Alabama Alliance yep. member, and then the originals. So you got Leica, and then you got Sigma as well. I, I think that's a cool thing to be able to tell people because if if Panasonic gets off our game, you've got alternatives, and so that's going to keep us sharp on the you know on the development side. Otherwise, you're going to move to another company because your lenses are going to work there. Oh, yeah. I guess yeah, that is kind of true. I didn't even think about it like that. Well, look, we're going to keep an eye on you because I'm I'm really curious about the partnerships, where that's going to go. Let me know down below which partnerships you think they're gonna get into. I think we're gonna see a lot more stills integration of things third-party-wise, personally. 
I'm just gonna throw that out there, please. And <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to what you Okay, said. <laughs> all right. This is Matt Frazier, everybody. We'll see you guys on the next one, but if you guys wanna know anything about the S5 II, S5 IIX, we'll put a link down to the firmware video that we launched for everything as far as that goes, and of course, specs for the cameras themselves. Matt, always a pleasure. Congratulations. Always, always good seeing you, sir.